Many of the trees on the school's nature trail have lost their leaves already. So identifying trees by their leaves can be difficult. But fortunately two of the trees in the nature trail can be identified by their bark. The birch and the poplar. As we learned last week, the birch leaf, which is on your left, looks very similar to the beech leaf on your right, but there are two main differences. The edge of the birch leaf is much more jagged than the beech leaf and has much finer teeth. Also, the stem of the birch leaf is much longer than that of the beech leaf. But most of the birch trees on our school's nature trail have already lost most of their leaves. So if we're going to be able to identify birch trees, we're going to have to look at, take a closer look at their bark. What makes the birch bark so distinctive is the presence of these horizontal lines. These horizontal lines are very distinctive and set the birch tree apart from most of the other trees that grow on the nature trail. The poplar tree, which has also lost most of its leaves by now, uh, is also called the tulip tree because of these tulip-like flowers that they get in the spring. However, most of those flowers are up pretty high and you don't often see them. You do notice, however, the long, straight boughs of these trees. The leaf of the poplar tree on the left here is similar to the leaf of the sugar maple tree, which is on the right. But there's one fairly obvious difference. If we think of the points protruding outward on the leaves as, say, fingers, the poplar leaf does not have a central finger the way the sugar maple does. But what makes the tulip tree or the poplar tree easiest to identify is its rather unusual bark. It's composed of ridges and valleys but what makes it distinctive is the valleys in the bark, the lower areas tend to be lighter in color than the ridges, these other areas here. This is how you can uh, identify a tulip tree with fair fair amount of certainty. Finally, I'd like to clear up a little bit of confusion that I may have created in our lesson on maple trees. Uh, I did realize we had so many Norway maples growing in, in our nature area. The Norway maple is an invasive species, it's not native to this area, and it looks very, very much like a sugar maple. So much so that there's a good chance I may have pointed to a few Norway maples and called them sugar maples in our uh, lesson on maple trees. When they are side by side, you can notice a few differences in the leaves, even though they look very, very similar. The Norway maple is on your left. It tends to be just a little bit bigger and a little bit broader, a little bit wider than the sugar maple. And you, the edge is perhaps just a little bit more jagged. But remember, there's a lot of variety in size and shape among leaves, even on the same tree. So you can't always go by just the shape of the leaf in determining between the two. Uh, this time of year, however, it's it's easier to tell them apart because the Norway maple tends to stay green much longer in the fall than the sugar maple. So when you see them standing side by side and you see one tree has got a lot of gold leaves and a lot of bare branches where the leaves have already fallen off and another one is still green and covered with leaves, the one that's still green is most likely the Norway maple. By now, we have covered most of the trees that grow in our school's nature area. And I hope as you are walking along our school's nature trail, you can pick out the maple trees, the oak trees, the hickory trees, 
and I hope you enjoy these beautiful woods as much as I do.